So um, the second question was, has the American Cancer Society position guideline uh, changed? And the answer is yes, it has changed. Um, this was their uh, recommendation based on their 2001 uh, update. Um, and basically at that time, basically what they said was that um, screening should occur for informed men with at least a 10-year life expectancy. Didn't really say what, um, didn't really spell out what information should be given. And at that time they recommended a yearly PSA and digital rectal exam for average uh, risk men who are over age 50. And this should start at age 45 for higher risk uh, men. Um, given the controversies um, in the literature and our new knowledge, um, the American Cancer Society updated their guideline uh, this past year. And so the purpose was to develop a document that accentuated the importance of involving men in the decision of whether to initiate or continue testing for prostate cancer, given the uncertainties regarding the magnitude of the potential benefit of prostate cancer screening in light of the certain morbidity associated with treating screen-detected cancer and potentially overdiagnosis. And so um, their aims were to uh, basically make recommendations to providers and patients um, with average uh, potential risk, um, make recommendations for screening men potentially are at higher risk, uh, make recommendations regarding the uh, most appropriate tests and how often those tests should be given, and, off, and also make recommendations regarding the uh, advisability and content of sh the sh shared decision making, so kind of to lead you down the pathway. So basically, uh, they reviewed the literature of, uh, from 1950 to 2009. Uh, looking at screening efficacy, a variety of things related to test performance, physical and psychological uh, adverse effects. This was reviewed by the uh, Prostate Cancer Advisory Committee of the ACS. And um, they developed uh, this evidence-based kind of consensus uh, guideline. This was circulated to peer reviewers and their board of directors. So it was vetted by a variety of, uh, of different groups inside and outside of the uh, ACS. And so their recommendation now is this, is that men with a 10-year life expectancy should make an informed decision with their health care provider regarding screening after receiving information about uncertainties, risks, and benefits. Screening should not occur without informed decision making. Um, and this informed decision making should be provided with their health care provider or other reliable source. So in other words, what the ACS would now frown upon would be, uh, you know, having a thousand guys line up for PSA testing just because there is an announcement out there. They would frown upon that now based on potentially a lack of informed decision making and the fact that this, the, the, the individual didn't have a chance to uh, understand potentially what they were doing and ask questions about the downstream events of PSA testing. They recommend this discussion occur for average risk men at age 50 and for higher risk men at age 45. For higher risk, we're basically uh, talking about African American men, men with a family history. And for those at very high risk with multiple family members affected at early age, they would also recommend starting at age 40 for the discussion. Now, what should that discussion include? So they've actually outlined the core elements of what that discussion should in include. The fact that prostate cancer is an important health concern, the fact that screening with digital rectal exam and, digital and PSA uh, does detect cancer earlier than no screening, but the fact that screening may be associated with decreased prostate cancer uh, death. There's uncertainty about whether the cancer you would be potentially diagnosed with is lethal. Treatment of that cancer may be associated with side effects. PSA and digital rectal exam may be associated with false positive and negative results. Abnormal tests may lead to unnecessary biopsies. And not all men with prostate cancer need immediate treatment. So these are thought to be the core elements that should be incorporated into a discussion. Now immediately one of the things that's recognized is that in a physician's busy office, he may not have time to discuss these issues with a patient. 
So one of the things that they developed in conjunction with others are decision aids that patients can actually um, be referred to um, that will help inform them about the various complexities of early detection testing for PSA. And um, I use one of these aids in our community-based uh, program uh, by the American Cancer Society, and it's called Testing for Prostate Cancer. Should I be tested? Is it the right choice for me? So as information on those core elements uh, that we just mentioned about screening versus no screening, downstream effects, things like that, and in the end, it basically um, takes men through kind of a decision analysis pathway that allows them to define what they value in making a decision. For instance, um, it says you may, be, you may wish to be tested if you value finding cancer early. You're willing to be treated without def, uh, definite benefit. You're willing to run the risk of urinary, bowel, or injury from treating early prostate cancer. Or you may not wish to be tested if you place a higher value on avoiding the risk of screening and treatment, such as worry or problems with urinary, sexual, or bowel function. Or you're willing to accept the chance that you may have prostate cancer and may not know it before it causes you harm. And so it kind of helps you kind of decide where you fall in line with respect to risks or benefits. Their actual recommendations are, are these. Um, a serum PSA level for those who wish to be screened, serum PSA level with or without a digital rectal exam, yearly PSA interval if your PSA is above 2.5, so they recommend a yearly PSA in that setting, but if your PSA is less than 2.5, they would recommend decreasing that to uh, about every two years. Um, for a threshold for further evaluation, um, they used the four nanogram per mil uh, cutoff for males of average risk. And for men in that kind of gray zone between two and a half and four, they strongly recommend that you consider other factors such as digital rectal exam, race, family history. Um, uh, these guidelines um, are based on consensus. I don't necessarily agree with every point of them, but it does form, I think, a useful um, evaluation tool for, uh, for patients uh, to use.